In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you all. <laughs> Welcome to the Mass. We celebrate together this Saturday morning, which is very wet. Whoever has been praying for rain, it's time to stop. Thank you. We'll call to mind our sins and ask for God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, in the abundance of your kindness, you surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you. Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what our consciences fear and to give what our prayers do not dare to ask you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please take a seat for the readings. First read is from the book of Job. Job accepts that God is mighty, powerful, whatever he has decided, Job will no longer question it. And so he hasn't cursed God, he hasn't questioned God's wisdom, and so all of his fortunes are restored, his daughters, his farm, his animals, and his daughters are beautiful. Let's listen. A reading from the book of Job. This was the answer Job gave to the Lord. I know that you are all-powerful. What you conceive, you can perform. I am the man who obscured your designs with my empty-headed words. I have been holding forth on matters I cannot understand, on marvels beyond me and my knowledge. I knew you then only by hearsay, but now, having seen you with my own eyes, I retract all I have said, and in dust and ashes I repent. The Lord blessed Job's new fortune even more than his first one. He came to own 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 she donkeys. He had seven sons and three daughters. His first daughter he called Turtle Dove, the second Cassia, and the third Mascara. Throughout the land there were no women as beautiful as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance rights like their brothers. After his trials, Job lived on until he was 140 years old and he saw his children and his children's children up to the fourth generation. Then Job died, an old man and full of days. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The apostles will listen are a bit boastful. They shouldn't be because these are gifts that they have from God. We should only boast in his wonderful works. The 72 came back rejoicing. Lord, they said, even the devils submit to us when we use your name. And Jesus said to them, I watched Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Yes, I have given you power to tread underfoot serpents and scorpions and the whole strength of the enemy. Nothing shall ever hurt you. Yet do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you. Rejoice rather that your names are written in heaven. It was then that filled with joy by the Holy Spirit, he said, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father. And no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And then turning to his disciples, he spoke to them in private. Happy the eyes that see what you see, for I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see and never saw it, to hear what you hear and never heard it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please take a seat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear people, it's been raining all night. It's going to rain all day. It'll probably rain for the rest of the week. But rain benefits fishermen. It benefits farmers. And there's nothing that ducks love better than to paddle about in the rain. So here's a lovely story. A missionary brother was in Africa at times of drought. There was no rain. And hydrologists arrived in his parish with very expensive equipment, and they began to drill. And they drilled twice under the desert sand. It was 1979, people were dying of thirst. They drilled, and they found nothing. But missionaries are often touched by God in a very special way. So Dario Lawrence Gig thought there might be a more natural way to find water. So he got a couple of twigs from the acacia tree, Remember, the acacia tree is the same tree that made the Ark of the Covenant. Remember, the acacia tree is the same tree used for the crown of thorns. And Davio, in his own words, and initially for a bit of fun, he summoned the hydrologist and the requirement. He said, watch this. He took out the sticks. He didn't know if it it would work. And in his own words, the sticks began to rotate. They drilled and they found water. And Dario, Brother Dario, is now 66 years of age, and he has discovered thousands of water holes. And his nickname all over Africa is the Water Brother. This will be his day, (laughs) the Water Brother. His fee is he paid by results. He says, this is a gift from God. He didn't ask for it. He didn't pay for it. He didn't go to school to get it. He got it freely, and so he gives it freely. Contrast that with the disciples today. My goodness, we have been casting out devils, they say boastfully. Maybe they thought there was a bit of cash to be made. And sometimes you feel that the disciples don't quite get it, do they? They're a bit thick. God is going to push the point home again and again, and eventually into their feeble minds they get it. And so after all, God himself does wonders in Jesus, and then he says, don't tell anybody. It's called the messianic secret. Don't tell anybody, I'm not just a wonder worker. Think ahead. What is important is Calvary. Calvary, the cross, and the victory over sin and death. So rejoice rather that your names are written in heaven in the book of life. A 
And today the name of Elizabeth Beaton. Elizabeth is here with us today and we just invite her quietly to come forward now and to stand on God's holy altar and to come with her sponsor. Sponsor, yeah. And Elizabeth, I asked Elizabeth to choose a name to write something about the saint. So Elizabeth has written something about Joan of Arc. And Elizabeth produced this beautiful summary. And she's got little photographs she's downloaded at each of the four corners. And this is what Elizabeth has written. Joan of Arc's strength has encouraged me to be more faithful and to trust in God. Her passion has made an impact on women's leadership and has motivated me to have more confidence and courage in myself to be a leader. Well done. So Elizabeth, you're the only girl in a family of four brothers. You might need the help of St. Joan of Arc. <laughs> You've chosen the saint well. Well done. So now we're going to make our promises to God. It's very simple, and the answer to each is, I do. And so, do you re re renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. do you renounce the lure of evil? so that sin may have no mastery over you. Do you renounce Satan, the author and the prince of sin? And do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and of earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. We're going to call down the Holy Spirit with his many gifts upon Elizabeth, who has prepared so well. Six months preparation every week in Vietnam. Then when she comes to the lovely parish of St. Francis, and abled and abled by Sister Francesca. Well done. So we're all going to put our hands out and invoke the Holy Spirit. Put your hands out like this and just imagine that your hands are resting on the head of Elizabeth. Imagine that the spirit of love and fire and warmth will now descend from heaven upon his chosen daughter. All powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed Elizabeth and you gave her new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon her to be her teacher and her guide. And Father, give her the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Give her the spirit of right judgment and courage. Give her the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill her with the spirit of wonder, wonder and awe in your presence. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we have an anointing with the oil of chrism. The same oil, olive oil mixed with balsam, which anointed kings and emperors and emperors important and powerful people in ages past, such as the, is the dignity which now comes down upon Elizabeth. And a little application of gel to help to keep us safe. And so Elizabeth be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
And Elizabeth has her book of the sacraments. It's lovely. Every sacrament that she has received, the priest, the bishop, has attested to it with his own stamp and his own signature. And today I have a little gift for Elizabeth. <laughs> it's called the Roman Whistle. It's lovely. Elizabeth, don't take it out in the rain because the covering is gold. It's lovely. And you don't want the lovely colours to wash away in the water. I've inscribed it myself. It is something very simple, very simple. To Elizabeth Beaton on her confirmation day in St. Francis, Aberdeen, Saturday, 3rd of October, 2020, from Father Peter Barry. Just put it back into protective custody. It is. And Elizabeth, this is your little gift, and this is your record. I've signed it myself. Here's my signature. Father Peter Barry, dated, and the Paris signature, St. Francis of Assisi, Catholic Church, Aberdeen. So Elizabeth, have a good life. Choose well, have a happy life. You're entitled to your happiness. And do something beautiful. Do something beautiful for God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. <clears throat> Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. <clears throat> It'll become for us the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, the God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And Lord, wash away all my iniquities. Cleanse me from all of my sins. And pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for though you have no need of our praise, Yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, says our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave me thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
And in the same way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once we were giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It'll be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim together the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. I remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, with you, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now let us pray with great confidence to the Father, using the words which Jesus, who is our Saviour, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety. As you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Anybody upstairs, peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation but health in mind and in body. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away all the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the communion anthem, the Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the soul that seeks him. By a lovely coincidence, the thought for today in the day-by-day -day booklet, every day a different one comes from Joan of Arc, and it says, in God's name, let us go on bravely. Let us go on bravely in God's name. We'll thank God for his many gifts in a moment of precious silence. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Count us almighty God that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Mass tomorrow at 11 o'clock. We'll have to register. It's very easy for either the 11 or the 6 o'clock Mass at night. You'll be very welcome as always. Mm -hmm.